Welcome to the Stuff and Things Podcast. Your home for all stuff related to your favorite things in entertainment. Now, here are your hosts. Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of the Stuff and Things Podcast. I am Sam, joining me to discuss... Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, Season 1. It's my partner in crime, it's Stefan. Hey, buddy, how we doing? Yeah, not too bad, man, and yourself? Yeah, not too shabby, not too shabby. So, this is a, this is a show that's been a while coming. Um, we we took a look at uh, House of the Dragon, thought, yeah, that's going to be a show, Game of Thrones spin-off we're going to enjoy. Um, obviously looked at it, going to be episodic. Uh, as it worked out, I think... I got taken down ill, uh, like, just as the first episode aired, and we kind of looked at it and went, I'll tell you what then, to make lives easier, because we got so many other shows at the moment as well, we're going to break this season into two parts, going to do part A and part B. I would love to say to everyone listening that I am so smart and so genius that I did this because the first five episodes is before a large time jump and actors change. But it's just absolute luck. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm quite impressed with it. I'm quite impressed with how that's worked Because out. without me admitting it's luck, people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I see why you're doing it this way. We're talking no. about young cast and then grown-up yeah, cast. Yeah, no, no, this was absolute potluck. Uh, the show's been renewed for a season two. Uh, when yes. it comes around to the season two... Uh, assuming we're as interested as we are now, we probably will go back to per episode like we did with Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. But for season one, uh, which is obviously a bit of a always a bit of a crab shoot with show, especially spin offs. I'm never yeah. sure with a spin off because I'm always kind of like, oh, will it be as good as the original? And the way Game of Thrones ended with season eight, I'm still kind of. I'm of the opinion that, you know, all, all things have to end and any kind of ending is never going to be the ending perhaps you had in your head. But I yeah. I am still, even with all of those factors, still I don't think Season 8 was good. Um, oh, I must say, if, if I'm putting all cards on the table here... Yeah. So when me and you, what, a couple of months ago now, spoke about this podcast, yep. I actually said to you, do you know what, I might bow out of this one. You did. You might find someone else... Yep, you someone did. else to do it because season eight for me i like to pretend season eight never happened yeah yeah because season seven was like one of it for me it's one of those shows that for some reason got cancelled unexpectedly and was left on a cliffhanger yeah and yeah, yeah. seven incredible seasons and then ah, oh, they never made season eight ah oh, the <laughs> bastards see the, the, you know. the thing is is there's a lot of content in eight that's very good but I, I, I oh don't, don't. <laughs> do you know um I caught a Family Guy episode which had me in stitches. So Family Guy uh, on a regular basis now does kind of like parodies of pop culture yeah. shows and stuff. And the Star Wars stuff is amazing. The Star Wars stuff is hilarious, and the best thing about it is, is you know that Star Wars stuff is made by real fans because the jokes are so niche. Yeah. Um, the best thing about them, by the way, is they showed them to George Lucas and he liked them. So that, that to me, is always kind of very funny to me. But anyway, yeah. um, with regards to that, they did an episode of Game of Thrones and uh, it was uh, uh, was it, uh, John Yellowsnow and stuff like that. It was all very silly, very juvenile humour. And they got to this bit where it's the battle for Winterfell and they went, oh, and one of the characters goes, oh my God, they're hideous. There's thousands of them. This looks like makeup people have spent literally days getting every detail right. And then the screen goes black. And for like three minutes. And bear in mind, a blank screen on TV for three whole minutes is a long time. It's literally just them going, oh, this battle's insane. This is the greatest battle in the history of television. Oh, <laughs> And it's just nonstop. And then at the end of it, one of them goes... Oh, what a shame no one got to see it. He said, oh, it's their own fault for having crappy TVs. Which, of course, is yeah. what the Game of Thrones visual effects person came out and said when they were accused. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so we digress. So, this yeah, is... I was I was willing to, to step aside and not do this show because I was like, no, I was out of love of Game yeah. of Thrones. The season 8 ruined it for me. Kind of, I was out. Yeah. And I said to you, I was like, look, I'll tell yeah. you what. I'll watch the first episode. Yep. Yeah. And if it manages to grab me, 
fine i'll come on board i'll do the podcast if it doesn't grab me yeah then find someone out. else yeah and, and now i get to maybe like a wednesday evening and i'm like oh come on hurry up yeah, come on it's, it's next quite, episode next episode come on fun. and the other thing that's interesting is i don't think your wife has seen game of thrones but is into no. this she's so she's actually the one that's turning around to me we put the kids to bed and she's like can we can we watch house of dragon now wow that's good and i'm like what yeah you haven't even seen like i'm excited to watch game of thrones from the beginning again with her see i actually did a rewatch of game of thrones uh must have been over christmas i think so i have a lot of spare mm. time and the thing that grabbed me is the dialogue when no. you when you watch seasons one through five the level and the the scenes it's like wow this show had everything <laughs> yeah. and then from six it's good and in seven, there's some incredible scenes. The visual effects are amazing. It's the storylines are clashing now in seven, but the dialogue and the level of writing is noticeably different. And then in <laughs> eight, it's yeah. Anyway, right. So this is we're going to talk about five episodes. Um, yep. We're sort we're going to walk through them, bullet point in. So season one, episode one. The title of the episode was. The heirs of the dragon. Yes, this is hair, heirs, as in hairs. the heir, not hairs. <laughs> no, not hairs or heir. So, heirs. so, so, yeah. so, if you are going to misread this, like a certain idiot did, and I'm yeah. sat there for the whole episode thinking, why are they? Is there? Is this dragon going to be hairy? It's a furry dragon. I, I, I'm yeah. Which, by the way, sounds like a euphemism. Yeah, don't sit on <laughs> don't sit on his furry Come ride dragon. my hairy dragon. No, 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 moving on, moving no, on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, if you're watching this show, you can't expect this to be PG, all right? So don't. No. It's no. Literally, uncle fucking and stuff going on. So you cannot have a pop at us. Game of Thrones uses my favourite word and my wife's most hated word quite yeah. often, yeah. and they say it, and I smile, and she just looks at me, and I'm yeah. like, ah, she so, said it. <laughs> so I, I will say that when it comes to censorship a lot of the podcast providers are American companies and you cannot drop C bombs. <laughs> okay, I will not drop a C bomb. So so favourite word. Yeah, so so C bomb we can say. Uh actually the see you next Tuesday. No, no, no. Because can I call them a count. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, the count. I don't One count. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, anyway, <laughs> right, so um, we open up with episode one with a little bit of backstory as the previous king had no male heirs. Yep. Uh, and so he, he has all the lords of the land come together and vote on who they think should be take take charge. It is his yes. way in his mind to make it fair and to stop the land from being ripped apart. Uh, his daughter, I believe it is, or her male cousin. Yes. And all of the lords get together and say the male cousin. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, I, I think just watching this, I'm kind of like, well, that, yeah. Yeah, that's... When you think about the kind of era this is set in, if you were going to do it in human history, yeah, that's that's the way it's going to go. Um, I immediately think to myself, well, there we go. We've in, Instantly, we know where the battle lines are. <laughs> So, oh, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, well, you can see what's happening here. Yes. Yeah. What What is funny to me is in that backstory, we're kind of like, like we watched it and we're like, okay, we know this is about the Targaryen family. We know it's going to be a, a civil war within the family, and we watched that beginning. And we're like, ah, oh, okay, that was easy. We know, we know where the war yeah. is, and yeah, it's the not. The war is going to be don't have a woman on the throne. <laughs> yeah, and and, <laughs> okay. and it's kind of and it's kind of not that. It's not them anyway. Um. She goes and marries the sea snake. Very, yeah. very clear. We have to say sea snake. Um, yeah. So years later, he is now king. And he himself has only a daughter. Um, feeling that this is kind of the same issue repeating. Uh, he has got his wife pregnant and he's expecting. And he's hoping yeah. for a male heir. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, now there's a scene in this. Yeah, yeah. Where... But we're going to come on to it. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, just wait because yeah. I, I want to talk to you about that, given your current yeah. predicament. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. His brother is there now. His brother, aka Doctor Who, seems yeah. to want the throne. In, in these initial scenes, anyway, to me, 
he seems to want the throne. He's arrogant, cocky as hell. Um, he's the warrior, the soldier type. The king isn't. The king seems to be more kind of peace and love, man. Let's just keep trade going, you know. You do a few treaties. The brother seems to be a bit more stab first, ask questions later. Yeah, yeah. Actions first and then yeah. content. He's one of those ones where it's easier to get forgiveness than permission yeah. sort, of, yes. sort of thing. Yes, yeah. we all know those people. And in fact, at different points in our life, we've been those people. <laughs> yes. I yeah. was 18 or 19 and I suddenly realised, oh, I, I, people seem to accept my cheeky little grin and apology a lot more than they say yes when I ask permission. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Prince Damon, as he is, uh, he has been put in charge of the gold cloaks. Uh, now, he kind of trains these guys... And what is interesting to me is, of course, when we are watching Game of Thrones, the Gold Cloaks, very established, very... They've been around a long time. What we're seeing here is the establishment of them. And he literally leads them into the town and cleans the streets. Like, he... And it's savage. It is brutal. Yeah, this like, isn't rounding up... There's getting up. rid of crime, and then yeah. there's getting rid of yeah. everyone. It is, it is a kind of... Um, philosophy that i look at when it comes to crime fighting in major cities and think could you imagine you know basically you just go right on this particular day we're suspending aegis corpus we're suspending all the courts the police are going to go in if you commit a crime you're dead <laughs> just like if you yeah. are a criminal expect and you're found on this day you're allowed to be murdered and that's it. No recourse. It's like the nothing. purge, but gone kind of. You awful. got it, yeah. And <laughs> it is. It is literally that. They just go in. This guy. This guy was a murderer, right off of his head. This guy was a rapist, right off of his junk, then off of his head. This yeah. guy. This guy stole stuff. Lock off both his hands. If he survives, great. If he doesn't, kill him. <laughs> you know. And yeah. he, literally, there are carts of body parts. He has led them in and destroyed it, and then we get a uh, uh, like. I a... think that was the bit. It was the fact it wasn't carts of bodies. It no, was carts it was of part body, of body parts. parts. Yeah, like I found, I found an yeah. arm. Yeah, throw it in yeah. cart twelve. And, and my wife is sat there looking at me, going, "What the hell yeah, is going what on?" Is this... <laughs> What's interesting is she's enjoying it and still watching, um, yeah. which possibly speaks that you should be nicer to her because she might be getting ideas. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we we get to see like a a council. You know, we've we've seen this in Game of Thrones. The king has a hand, the hand of the king, and he has some masters of different things, like master of coin yeah. and the the grand maester. And they sit there, and basically we get introduced to the hand, uh, Lord Hightower, who is straight up bitching about Damon, and you immediately yeah. you know, okay, there's tension there. Straight yeah, away. I don't know if it's just because of the Game of Thrones itself, but as soon as I'm introduced to a hand, and yeah. I'm like, oh, he's gonna be slimy. He's this gonna, this yeah. guy, this guy's gonna be planning stuff. He's, he's gonna be, he's gonna be sneaky. And without a shadow of a doubt, I think if you're looking at these guys and trying to see who is a political operator, he appears like straight away. He's the one you go, oh, yeah, yeah. keep an eye on him. That guy. <laughs> because there's there's this around Damon where he seems to be trying to keep the king and his brother at odds so yeah. you see that in the council meeting and then later you see something else which i want to finish on for this episode so damon and the king kind of were a bit like what the hell are you doing and damon's like hey i sorted crime shut your face <laughs> you know it's like don't yeah, yeah I, I yeah okay i might have been a bit heavy-handed but i bet no one's robbing anyone today <laughs> yeah i bet they're not because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there's no one left um so he kind of makes his point. And the king, the best thing I liked about it is the king was kind of like, he does have a point. I mean, he's out of line, but he, yeah. he's, he has got a point. It was so wrong, but yeah, yeah crime is down by like, you know, yeah. everything. 10,000%. <laughs> um, so that was kind of an interesting scene for me. We kind of see, if we, we do see one of the guys there is the Lord Stark, by the way, um, yeah. which of course, I don't know if you're like me, but I hear Stark and I'm like, oh, Yep, and I hear I hear Lannister, and I'm like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's way. some of them, you hear the name, and you're like, ooh. Yeah, yeah, you keep an eye on them bastards. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so... It's the Lannisters, keep him away yeah. from family members. Yeah, yeah. Don't let him near them. Yeah. Well, it's twin boys at this particular age, so you're... It's Lannisters, honestly, yeah, like, yeah, you know. Yeah, you're right, they're, they're definitely they're definitely at it. Uh, so, we, so we keep an eye on that, and we're sort of picking up bits of me. So the council meeting was interesting. The big scene in this episode for me 
and I think it kind of sets the so the tone for the series, and also um, is terrible. <laughs> is yep. the fact that the king, his wife, is trying to give birth. He's got a big tournament going on, etc., to celebrate the birth of his next his new child. He wants Who's it to be a boy. Definitely going to be a boy because yeah. he's seen the vision in his sleep, and it's a boy. Yeah, it's going to be a boy, and the maesters tell him, "Look, the baby's breech. We we we." all we we can do and basically give him the choice save try and save the child or save his wife he can't have both the guy calls it the impossible choice i have to ask you the impossible choice yeah i the way he answered it yeah i don't think he even thought no no to be honest with you that that it was no i'm gonna it's the impossible choice child i hope i hope you don't mind me sharing you, yes, yes. you and your beautiful wife are expecting your first child together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now this was a fun scene to watch. I, I was about to say, now, she, she is, uh, you know, heading towards bursting stage. Um, yeah. How, yeah, how away, genuinely, yeah. how was that? Because like for me watching it for two reasons, one, I, I find that visual and et cetera, horrible. I didn't need that. I, I didn't need that in my brain. And yeah. secondly, the idea of having that choice, the idea of a doctor coming to me and saying, look, I can save one or the other, and it's you. You've got to decide, and it's got to be now. The yeah. idea of that is the stuff of nightmares. Isn't it just? But my, my brain immediately went to, oh, I've talked Stefan into watching this. <laughs> like, literally, I'm thinking to myself, he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to watch this, and I've got him watching it, and I bet he sat down with his wife watching it. Oh, and I, I literally <laughs> felt cold. I was like, oh, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. Now, as it it's was... It's great, because for me, I'm sat there going, oh, my God, I've talked my wife into watching this. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, I just felt... I literally felt I, cold. I just turned over. around, smiled at her, and went... It's Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, well, I'm, 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 I'm very hopeful that she looked at it and went, Phew, good job, it's not the medieval times, isn't it? And, you, you yeah. know, that's the end. Cause... I, I think I got a bit of a, well, that was uncomfortable. Yeah. Was <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's well, Game of Thrones. Trust me, well, it doesn't get much. That sets the tone. Yeah, that's that's yeah, Game that's, of Thrones. And it does. I thought she was going to stop after that episode, but nope, she wants to watch the rest. I, I, well, I'm, I'm delighted at that, because obviously <laughs> yeah. that, that means that she's, parked it shelved it not not yeah, traumatized but, by yeah it. i think i was more traumatized watching that scene knowing i was sat next to yeah. her than she was watching it good well that's that's how it should be me and you it's can like, me and you can yeah. take the trauma i'm just glad she's okay like, don't look at her don't look at her don't um, look at her don't look at her <laughs> he does make that choice i say make the choice he just he basically just kills his wife and he, yeah. act, he acts like he loves her to bits but it's just all he cares about is getting a son yep and the son dies. And so, now, before so, the son dies, my yeah. wife sat there and gone, oh, I hope it's a daughter. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, 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 okay. I, I, wanted, I wanted it to be like Tyrion, like come out a dwarf or something, just really mess with him. But no. Yeah. He's, I, I hope it's a daughter. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, Don't just, piss my wife off. Right. Never, never. No, that's, that's, a, that's a rule for life, mate. Yes. Don't, do not piss off the wife. Um, but... They die, they have a... By the way, they have a really interesting funeral where the dragon basically burns them, uh, like cremation. So we get to see young Rhaenyra walk forward and say Dracarys, which was kind of a cool little thing. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, that was a cool little thing. Kind of yep. brutal that you're making your daughter do that for your wife and child, but okay. Yeah, the king isn't many people's favourite character about now. No, yep. not at all. Now... We also get a scene where uh, Prince Damon has gone off to a brothel. Now, this is an interesting scene for two reasons. One, he, he buys a round of drinks and toasts the air for a day, which yeah. gets back to the king via Hightower, and that pisses him off to the point he banishes him, he kicks him out. Yeah. Which, which again, and I'm like, oh, that high tower guy that he was. You could tell earlier he was trying to drive a wedge, and he found out that, and boom, gone. Yeah. But the other part of it, and this is probably one of the stranger things I've ever had to pick up for a podcast, is we see Damon fucking away at a whore, but he can't finish. 
Yeah. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is this becomes a recurring theme yeah. to the point that he's clearly got an issue. Um, what that issue is, I don't know, but we do see it continue. It's um, mentioned a fair few times throughout so far. Yeah. It, it is, and also we learn that he is married to a to a lady of the Vale, and yeah. and everyone keeps saying to him, "Go back to your wife, get a get a baby." And I think what we're realizing is this is why he isn't there. Clearly, there's some either a physical or a mental issue stopping him, and to avoid embarrassment or whatever he's just gone off to war he's just gone off and done stuff but so yeah so that's why i'm picking up on that i wouldn't rarely comment on a guy's inability to ejaculate however i felt that this was a point to bring that up yeah it, it is a point that is kind of made for us multiple times in this show and yeah yes. we, we've spoken about less weird things yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I think as I think in my podcasting history, that's the first time I've ever had to talk about that. Yeah, you can't get it up. You can't finish. What, what, this what, is the podcast. He this appears is very strange. He appears to be getting it up because he's banging away, unless yeah. he's pushing rope. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Moving on. Um, yeah. So again, we're skipping through. We're moving on into episode two. Uh, the House Rogue of the Dragon, Prince. season one, episode yes. two. The Rogue Prince. You didn't wait yeah. for me to ask. I didn't know. I thought you were just going to say the next episode, and I thought I was going to go. But yeah, well, we'll okay. do that. We'll do that for three, and okay. we'll make it sound really professional. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so again, the bullet points. Yep. Now, one of the key bullet points here is six months have gone by, and I yeah, think time I think whichever one of us watched it first basically gave the other a heads up, and I can't remember which way round it was. But I remember I think you watched this one first. I think but, you text me. But I remember us both being like, "I'm really glad you said," because I was watching it going, "What? Hey, when did the? How did? What the?" Yeah. So, so there was one last thing from episode one. Sorry for High Tower, which of course feeds into this one. High Tower literally pimps his teenage daughter, who's fourteen or fifteen in that episode, yeah. to the king. Go and see the king. Yeah. He'll appreciate yeah. your company. Put on, like, put on oh. one of, put on one of your mother's dresses. Yeah, and now, get in that there. made me feel uncomfortable. Oh, mate, it is it, all of and it's uncomfortable. And the then, way of course, it was kind of filmed as well. You kind of think, yourself, she's gone in there, but it was almost like where she was young, she was also naive enough yeah. to kind of know what the dad meant, yeah, but, at the, but at the same time, time not, not quite. Yeah, so she is best friends with Rhaenyra, who is the king's daughter. And now she is trying to seduce the king. Um, but unawareingly almost. And the king yeah. also seems to be almost unaware. And you're kind of like, it's really uncomfortable to watch. So six months have passed and those two have now sh- struck up a bit of a bond. You know, they're talking yeah. practically every day and at night. She's gone to visit him, bringing him like a tea and stuff. And he's he's carving, he's like creating a uh, like a miniature of King's Landing. Uh, yes, which a lot of cool. there's a lot of very funny memes about oh my god the king's working on the opening credits for Game of Thrones, <laughs> which I love. I that's love brilliant. that someone has said yeah. that. That is genius. Uh, but like I said, uh, Damon got banished, and so in his banishment and temper, he went and seized Dragonstone. Now again, for Game of Thrones fans, Dragonstone was where was the ancestral seat for House Targaryen in the Seven Kingdoms in Westeros. Yeah. Um, and it's where Daenerys retook when she first returned, and it's where Stannis was based in the earlier seasons. Yeah. So Dragonstone is a place we have seen a number of times, but when we've seen it in Game of Thrones, it's a little bit ruined. And of course, until Daenerys is there, there's no real dragons we do get to see it briefly because there's kind of like a fog but in the scenes that we see it's like all the walls are still built everything's like it looks like a real palace fortress mm-hmm. and basically and he's Damon, taking some eggs he's taking an egg with him as well yeah. and he stole a dragon's egg because he not any dragon egg he stole yeah, yeah. the baby's dragon yeah, egg yeah yeah, yeah. so it was a, tar- move. A, tar- a Targaryen custom to put a dragon's egg in with the newborn child in the hope that there would be a bond and the child could become a dragon rider because not all Targaryens are which again was something new I'd mm-hmm. always just assume Targaryen dragon 
you get on but no not all of them you are you have to have the bond and stuff yeah you have to cool. have that yeah yeah it is pretty cool uh, and Rhaenyra is a dragon rider and so is Damon. yeah um so he is there and the king is being encouraged to deal with it. Like, you can't allow him just to be over there. He's broken in. He's stolen this egg. He's then sent you an invite because he's planning to marry a second wife, even though he's married. The woman from the brothel. Yeah, the woman from the yeah. brothel. Uh, he's also saying that he's going to have a child, and that's why he stole the egg. We all know. Mm, is he, though? Because unless, <laughs> unless he has a wet dream and she rubs it, it ain't going to happen. Um <laughs> You know, it's just unless there's a turkey, unless there's a turkey baster going on, this guy ain't finishing in her anytime soon. Yeah, I went there. He went there. Yeah, yeah. Doc, Doctor Who is not he needs to see a doctor. But yeah. so we have this situation again where Hightower is like, we should send ships, we should send troops. You know, how dare he do this? And we yeah. do have a confrontation. And when I'm watching it, I am thinking to myself, this is this is going to kick off. Hightower yeah. with a load of the King's Guard. Um, you've got Damon there with the troops who are completely loyal to him, and you can tell that. Well, yeah, and he's taking like all the troops from yeah, the, where the he gold was. Clubs, he's like, yeah. they're my army. I'll yeah. take them with me then. Yeah. Cheers. And you can tell they're completely loyal to him, and it looks like it's about to kick off. And also, his dragon is there. And in that moment, I'm thinking, well, this is Game of Thrones. Goodbye, Hightower. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm literally like, they're all dead. They're literally, that dragon is going to cook them, and that's the scene. However, Rhaenyra comes in on her dragon, which I, I kind of, again, visually, wow, it looked yeah. amazing. But also, she then just walks straight up to her uncle, basically calls him an ass. Uh, you know, you're causing all this trouble. Do you really want this? And he, he just... He acts like he was doing it just for attention. Yeah. And he gets the attention he wanted, and then he don't care. He just hands the he egg He hands over. it back and is like, yeah. okay, cool story. Bye. Yeah, and just walks off. So, it's almost like he did it to say, look what I can do. Exactly. And also, uh, and as the later episodes go on, I think he wanted attention from Raniera. Yeah, that, that uh, which which at, which, at, yeah. which at this point, I didn't see. I just thought, uh, you know, family closeness, um, and yeah. he obviously respected her. Interesting thing for me: those two always speak Valerian to each other, but they don't speak in Valerian to anyone else. Have you noticed that? Yeah, and it's like half their sentence is Valerian, half of it yeah. is just kind of normal. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I find that quite interesting. I, I feel like that's a uh, a subtle narrative way of showing their closeness. Um, and of course, yeah. the thing is. A lot of people with this show as well, especially if you've come to the show and not watched uh, Game of Thrones or not being much of a history nerd in terms of what Game of Thrones and everything was based on. Uh, love thy neighbour, love thy family. The Targaryens kind of, ooh, why should we sully our bloodline, brother and sister? Let's get it on, make a baby. And then, you know, we're pure blood Targaryen. They yeah. they're kind of hump the person you're born next to rather than finding someone else, um, yeah. and and it lead, <laughs> and it does lead to them descending into madness. You know, inbreeding does do that. This is a biological fact, not yep. something they would be aware of. Which, when of course Game of Thrones comes around and you hear the characters say, "When the gods, when sorry, when a Targaryen is born, the gods toss a coin, and you know, either going to be mad or going to be okay. We don't know." And it's kind of interesting that, of course, we're looking at it and we're going, well, we know why. <laughs> yeah. Brothers, sisters, or uncles and nieces have been going at it for generations and then their children are born and they go at it. And yeah, they're inbreeding. Not good, people. If no. you're listening in Alabama, take note. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I chose violence today, just yeah, so everyone's you did. aware. This is why we're not recording in the evenings, because yeah. when we record in the evenings, we choose violence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, typically <laughs> in the morning, I'm a far more subtle person, but I've had a full day at work and I'm just ready to go. Um, yeah. Uh, so the other thing in this episode, which is funny to right, this is funny to me. Okay, this oh. is a fictional show in a fictional world, yeah. and everybody knows it's actors. Okay, no yeah. one, no one watching this thinks it's a documentary, and if you do, I'm sorry to spoil that for you. It's this not. is not a history channel. This, no. this is not a history channel recreation or anything like this. It's a fantasy show in a fantasy world. None of it's real. None of it exists. All of them are actors. 
Yeah. And yet, and don't get me wrong, I completely understand why, there are people who are so disgusted at the fact that a 12-year-old girl is pushed on the king to marry yeah. that they stopped watching the show, pretty much protesting, wrote letters against HBO. This is disgusting. How could you, right? Yeah. What is actually interesting is in human history now, so in the history of humanity and kings and royal families and all of this stuff, unfortunately, that was pretty common. That was actually something that happened because yeah. when a princess, the women were commodities and they were used to create alliances. Yeah, it was literally a case of, um, you know, oh, I need an alliance with uh, France right now because we're going to go to war with Spain. Uh, have I got any daughters? Yeah, brilliant. How old's that one? Okay, great. Just marry that one off. Yeah, and yeah. there we go. We're allied now because my daughter is married to your son. My son's 50, your daughter's 12. Perfect, you know. Yeah, it didn't it matter. It happened, it didn't matter. And it was the time. And this show and this fantasy one, everything, that is the reality of it. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was uncomfortable to watch the scene where Massively. About, what did your parents say? Oh, my mother said it's fine, I don't have to lay, yeah. I don't have to lay with you until yeah, I'm 14. Yeah, I know. And it's like, and it's, oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh. And, it, and it is awful, and it is. And me and you were watching it and we're like, or anyone watching it, it's uncomfortable. But for me... That's good. Make it uncomfortable. So that way everyone watch it. Anyone who watched that scene and thought, nice, have a word. You have a problem. Yep. <laughs> you, you have a problem, sir. You need to get yourself checked. Um, but the funny thing for me is, or not really funny, but the kind of weird thing is, the king makes a choice. He, he doesn't marry the 12-year-old. He marries the 15-year-old. Uh, yeah. 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 Now... Yeah. The worrying thing is, is that you watch that and you go, oh, phew, he's made the better choice. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's and the funny thing. And then you take thing. a step back and go, yeah. oh, no, wait, oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. She's this best is... friends with the daughter who's only 14. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. No. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Now, in he's doing this. He's made a better this, choice, but it's still not a good choice. Now, in doing this, what is interesting to me in the show is the family, uh, the sea snake, are the Valerian family. They're from yeah. old Valeria, the same as the Targaryens. Now, of course, when we watch Game of Thrones, the House Valeria doesn't exist. No. Think about it. You know, House Targaryen has been pretty much wiped out, but does exist. We know about it, we learn about it, and obviously it re-emerges. House Valerian, no mention at all. No. Like, like they are gone. So we're, I'm watching this thinking, wow, something must happen. Now, perhaps the houses join and they do become House Targaryen and basically become one. But I'm watching it thinking this is going to be interesting because the Sea Snake is called that. He owns the biggest navy. Yeah. He has this massive army. This house is wealthy and is powerful. So I'm like... This is interesting. This is going to be a really fascinating story to learn about this house. And do they just become Targaryens? No, do they marry in and it all becomes one? Do they get wiped out? You know, is are they part mm -hmm. of this civil war and that's you know they get destroyed? So I like that. I was that was kind of interesting to me. But him rejecting the twelve year old daughter, he storms out. You know, the yeah. sea snake's done. He's angry. He's gone. And in the final scene, you see him go. To visit Damon and talk to Damon about the plan, and it's yeah. like, okay, yeah. this is where the civil war comes in. Okay, hey, exactly. I'm like you. I'm like, well, clearly, because it's funny. The opening scene of episode one, we're like, oh, there's the battle lines. No, it wasn't. No. In this scene, it's like, oh, there's the battle lines, and again, no, nope. <laughs> it, no, it's not. But we do move on. Uh, just walking again. We're walking our way through. We're going to episode three now. Uh, the title of episode three was... Second of his name. Top man. Time has once again marched on, this time by three years. In those yeah. three years, the king now has a two-year-old son. And the second of his name, this is his name day, his two-year name day. Yeah. Now, Which one I try to explain to my wife is basically birthday. Birthday, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what is interesting, and again, apologies about this, I'm jumping around. In episode two, when Damon is banished and kicked off, kicked away, sorry, in one and two, hmm. the king tells the whole court and makes every lord in the land swear fealty to his heir, Rhaenyra. Yeah. He names her the heir. 
now we are two years later and he now has a son and you can tell all of the lords are just like well now you've got a son that's that's the heir right yeah yeah you're swapping that back right no yeah. no 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 come on you got a boy now come on you, you're gonna sort that no yeah um, yeah. He wants to marry her off as well. He wants to marry Reniera off. Now, yeah. she is very independent, very headstrong, does not like the idea of being someone picked for her. Yep. Um, I don't think she likes the idea of going off and being someone's wife full stop, to be honest. I think she likes being a dragon rider and yeah, kicking ass. Yeah, she wants ass. to do her own thing. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing is, from my point of view, and you're probably your point of view, is the person that the king has tried to link her up with is one of the Lannisters. Yeah. And it's like, oh no. That's, Don't go there. Don't go that's, there. That's bad. But it's funny because, of course, he's like, oh, the Lannisters, they're wealthy, they're a powerful house, they're descendants back to the first men, you know, in Westeros, they're a Westerosi house. Yeah. Um, you know, because you got to remember the Targaryens are invaders. So the Lannisters, the Starks and people like that have been there for a long time. So marriages into them cements your legacy within this kingdom. Mm -hmm. The Targaryens really are kind of foreign interlopers to a lot of people still. So if you have these marriages and then your child is, you know, part Lannister, part Targaryen or part Stark, etc. That helps cement the people. Yeah. So that's what is on the king's mind. The king's being a bit political, being a bit trying to be a bit clever, you know, play a bit of three D chess. Uh, as it works out, she puts a massive dent in all of that. She basically tells Lannister to go forth and multiply with himself, which I don't blame her. The guy's a weirdo. Um, yeah. And then she decides to go hunting by herself, and she has a uh, royal bodyguard, a king's guard, go with her. Um, who she helped appoint uh, yeah, previously. Yeah, so she chose him, didn't she? He's the she only chose man him, that yeah. had combat experience. Well, I want yeah. that guy. Yeah. Now, that Which, was a fun scene, because yeah. he's like, no, 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 look, but he's from a good house, and he's yeah. from a good family. He's from, and she's like, no. yeah, but he's uh, the only one that's actually swung a sword in anger. If exactly. I want protection, yeah. it's that guy. Yeah, I want someone who actually knows how to fight. Um, so, yeah. I, I like... The idea that that scene where she picked him wasn't anything other than just that sensible thought process. Yeah. Now, we know that in the scenes that come up, there's a bit of an attraction there. I think that comes from spending the time together here. In yeah. episode three, they go off together, they're talking a lot, and there's a bit of an attraction between the two grows there. But that scene that you just discussed, I think, was brilliant because it showed her mindset of... You want me to appoint a knight, all of these guys sit around, eat, drink in their towers, and go to tournaments. That, that guy's actually fought people. He's yeah, actually he's done the job. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's obvious. And, and like me and you were watching, like, yeah, that's obvious. But as you said, they're like, no, 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 this guy's from a great house. Well, what does that matter? You don't know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get attacked, and he's going to go, oh, I'm trying to be here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what you want. Um, one of the other things we learn about this time jump is the war that was going on in um, the Stepstones, which is a, a group of islands to the south of Westeros, linking Essos and Westeros. And, uh, they're called the Stepstones yeah. because if from a bird's eye, it looks like you could step across them to go from the two. Now, the war that's going on there is Damon and the Sea Snake versus the... Crab feeder. Basically, now, this yeah. is a fun little uh, character, isn't it? Well, he looks yeah. like he's got grayscale, which of course we saw in Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. um, he's wearing the mask, which later we see repeated as the sons of the harpy who rebel in Essos against Daenerys. Yes, um, I knew I'd seen that face somewhere before. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. you go. You're thank welcome. you, thank you, thank you. Yep. You're welcome, brother. Um, and so it's an interesting character, and he appears to be winning the war, uh, because what they've done is they've dug themselves into caves, like the Viet Cong, and it doesn't matter how much napalm, fire, blood's being dropped, fire from the sky from dragons, they're dug into caves, you're not going to get them. Yeah. So they basically come out at night, do their damage, go back in their caves, and it's like there's nothing they can do. It's the fact they leave people like nailed to driftwood yeah. and let the crabs eat them. Yeah, I'm like, this... oh, that's 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 Game of Thrones. Yeah. Oh no, that's nasty. Yeah. Um, 
the amount of times I've turned around after watching these five episodes and gone, yep, Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yep. <laughs> well that's, that's the funny thing, because we're watching this. I actually feel like, although some of the scenes have been very graphic, you know, that, that birth scene, etc., it would be very graphic, I still think if you sit down and watch Game of Thrones or you're missing, she's going to be like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. There is one episode in particular that we all know what I mean by when yeah. I say I'm not looking forward to watching that no. one again. No, I, uh, no. I may go to football or something and let her watch yeah, that. Yeah, just, just say, watch this and cry. Here's tissues. Um, it's all about a wedding. It's fine. You'll love it. I'm going to go for a shower. Yeah, yeah goodbye. Um, so, like I said, this war is raging. Now, the king is getting advice. Basically, like, look, you're in this difficult situation. The war is going on, and Damon, etc., they're not winning. They're they're stuck. But if you help them, they will win, and then it's the ki- then it's your victory. You know, this is the time to act. And so he's like, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. You know, I've let Damon do this by himself. Everyone knows he's kind of done it by himself, but now I step in. You're right. I'm I'm the badass. Yeah. So he sends an envoy, a messenger. Poor guy, by the way. This is why they use ravens now. This poor bastard. <laughs> yeah. He shows up and hands Damon this note from the king, which is basically like, "Hey, don't worry about. It. I'll come and bail you out." Now he's probably written it flowerier than that, but Damon basically reads it as, "Ha, you're crap. I'm gonna come and fix this for you." So Damon beats the living shit out of the messenger, like literally, yeah. nearly beats him to death. Um, got messed up. Ooh. Got messed up. He then goes to this island on his own, seemingly on his own. Now, did you pick up on the fact it was a plan, or did you just think he was gone berserk by himself? I thought he'd lost it. I thought he'd just lost it and gone, right, hold it, I'm doing it myself. Come on then. Right. If oh, you, bloody show if you. you. If you get time, right, because... I picked up on something that was if you get time, rewatch this scene again before mm-hmm. the messenger arrives. Because one of the sneeze sorry, the sea snakes kids say yep. that say that quick, that's another <laughs> sea snakes kids actually says the only way we're gonna draw them out is if someone goes in, they come out thinking they're victorious, they've won. Yeah. And then we hit them. That's so, yeah, they have the conversations. I was yeah. stupid enough to do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, then when Damon shows up and I'm watching and I'm literally going, has he snapped? Or is it the plan? And I'm watching and I still, I'm like, I don't know. And then when he starts killing the guys, I'm like, I still don't know. Yeah, I still I'm don't still know like, this he's lost is. it. He's, he lost it. Yeah. And then, of course, the dragon comes in and they are not alone on that beach. The sea snake in his army arrives and it's yeah. a full-on battle and Damon goes off into the caves and comes out having killed the crab feeder leader. It brings and back like won. half of him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty messed up. I thought the battle scenes there were brilliant. The dragon, the fire, the actual fighting scenes, that was Game of Thrones at its I best. I could see it. it, yeah. I could see it all as well, which was brilliant. Um... I love that scene, and I love the fact that you, Damon, what you saw there was, I am not letting my brother bail me out of this. Yeah, I'm in this now. Yeah. Also, you got to see, he is a very good fighter. Oh, you yes. Know, you know, you've got that kind of, is he just a bit talk, is he a bit brash? No, he cut through, I don't know how many of those people oh, yeah. by himself. So, yeah, the, the guy, the guy knows what he's doing. Um, but yeah, so they win the war on their own. The king's offer of support is rejected, and they win the war. And he's actually crowned king of the stepstones, yeah. which you know feeds into what's coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, like we said, the princess does go off. Uh, she gets attacked by a wild boar, uh, which made me laugh because, of course, it's a wild boar that kings kills King Robert in the season one yeah. of Game of Thrones. So that was kind of interesting. Um but then Silent she re- yeah. she returns to the camp covered in blood, bruised dress, you know, a bit shredded, but with the boar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what's funny to me is you get to see that Lannister guy looking completely disgusted, like, oh what has the woman done, you know? Oh, that's terrible. But then you see a couple of the other knights like, yes, <laughs> yes <she laughs> love is. her. Yeah, yeah. badass. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, but the king is married to her best friend and there is clear, clear tension there because of that. Oh, yes. And 
in my ob- my humble opinion, um, quite rightly so as well. I yeah, don't... I mean, I'd be a little bit a little bit peeved. I think I'm yeah. not I'm not entirely sure how anyone would react to a parent getting with one of their best friends. I, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm not. No, I no. Let's let's not even think about it. Let's move well, on. I from reacted that. badly enough when my brother went on a day date with one of my best friends. I didn't react well to that. So let alone my yeah. father and my best friend. That would be yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not interested in your dad, but thanks for bringing it up. Um, <laughs> so, so again, marching on, season one, episode four, the title of the episode was... King of the Narrow Sea. There you go, see, it was King of the Narrow Sea, not the Stepstones. Uh, Damon returns and he arrives as a king, but he bends the knee. I put that because that was a bit of the older... Uh, you know, Daenerys. Yeah, bend the knee, bend, bend the, the knee. knee, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he does, and he does it in a very good way. Like, I won the war, brother. You know, you don't have to worry about this anymore. I don't want to be king of that. That's crap, you know. Here's my the, crown. You're yeah, still the king of you're, everything. Yeah, and he does it in a very kind of... He does it in a good way. He does it kind of publicly as well. And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. Because mm. he doesn't come across as a political operator. So when he does these things, I'm kind of like, okay, he's not actually... He doesn't hate his brother. Like, he isn't plotting to kill his brother. I don't think he is, anyway. No, but he... it's very difficult, because I keep flicking between, yeah, bad guy, and uh, yeah. not a good guy, but not that bad. Oh, yeah. no, bad guy. Oh, yeah, actually, it's... maybe he's not that bad. Maybe No, he's a bad guy. Oh, actually. It is, it is difficult. It is kind of weird. Um, now, this episode really um, has to be all about um, fucking... Um, so, basically, <laughs> Damon is back. Can we just point out what your text to me was about this episode? I said to you, um, I believe we've reached episode four and the writers were horny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what made me laugh is there's a young actress who plays Rhaenyra. She was 19 when this was filmed, which a lot of people find uncomfortable, but... You know, if if it's sixteen, she can legally do it. I don't understand why people get their knickers in a twist about her acting to do it in nineteen. But anyway, yeah. Um. So she's nine. Uh, her she she the actress in nineteen. The character is, I think, about it's that as eight, well. Seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, at yeah, least. A, yeah. Eighteen or nineteen as well at this point. Now she is taken by her uncle into Old Town as like a kind of like. Don't worry, you know, we're going to go down. You're going to meet the people. What the people are really like. So initially I'm watching this thinking this is kind of a fun scene because she sees that there's a play and the and the people are like, no, we don't want a female leader. And she can see she's a bit hurt by that. She shouts out something about treason yeah. or slang or something. Yeah. And the uncle's like, no, shut up. Shut up. Yeah, shut, shut your up. face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not fighting all of these people for you. Um, but you can, like, it's kind of like, I feel like he's doing this as like an educational thing. Like, you're in the palace, you don't understand what it's really like, so let me yeah. show you. And at this point, I message you going, I'm a bit worried about the uncle. Okay, yeah. I was like, as he's leading her through the town and stuff, I, I message you as I'm watching it going like, mate, I'm a little bit worried about the uncle. Yeah, yeah. Nothing so... major, because at that point, I didn't think it was going down that route. I thought yeah. he was going to get rid of her. Well, he doesn't get rid of her. He no. takes her to a brothel, which is a full-on orgy. Now, this is what this is a line that cracked me up, okay? So, Raniera, the actress who plays Raniera, in an interview when asked about this scene, said, Not uncomfortable for me at all. It was great. I felt a little bit bad for the extras, though, who were basically 69 in each other for 12 hours. <laughs> And when you think about that for a moment, oh, no. because no, their no, background, so basically it's like, take one, great, okay, now we're going to have another go at that, in, you're just in the background, okay, just keep simulating a 69. They have literally been doing that for hours and oh, hours and hours. How no to wonder- give yourself a neck ache. Yeah, tell me about it, God. It's a, but to me, what made me laugh about that is, to anyone who thinks like, oh, sex scenes in films, oh, it must be so difficult. It must just be awkward. It yeah. must just be so like cringy. But from the viewing point of view, this scene and everything for me, and this is, I know this is just me, and a few people are gonna think I'm being a bit silly here. I didn't think it was necessary. I felt it was like the scene with her and her uncle. I understand in the greater context. I think is gonna come from that. I don't think we needed the consistent background romp, the orgy. 
I, it just felt too much for me. I know it's Game of Thrones, and I know I sound like I'm being a bit squeamish now, but I just and looked I'm at sat and went, there looking at my wife going, Game of Thrones, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If, if you look at those two in the background, they look similar. They're probably brother and sister. They're probably brother and <laughs> sister. At least, at least you didn't look to your wife and go, hey, any ideas? No? Nope? Okay, right, fair <laughs> enough. Moving on. All right. So so orgies are off the table. Right, look, look, I just wanted to find out. It was just right? a question. Yeah. This, yeah. God, people do get angry about just innocent, innocuous questions, don't they? Like, how about I share you? No? Fine. All right. No worries. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and single. Um, so, <laughs> But like to me, it was like okay, it felt like you've stored up your boobs for the whole season, and you've thrown them into episode four. Like here you go, everyone. Yeah. To every crazy masturbating teen who's watching this show for the glimpse of boob, go crazy, my friend. This is your episode. Um, but like we said, there is this scene where he seduces her in that environment. And he's undressing her, he's he's got her, he's about to, and then he runs away. And I'm kind of like, that is literally leaving her with Lady Blue Balls right now. Yeah, what, um, yeah, that was, um, yeah, uncomfortable to watch for sure. And yeah. then the fact he just leaves her there and she's kind of like, oh, oh, right, oh, okay. I'm like, oh, okay. And it was it at was... that point I was like, oh, yeah, he can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, we've seen it already and we're kind of like, okay, so this is actually a problem. This is clearly, and perhaps he thought, you know, being Targaryen, if I try and give it to a member of my family, maybe that's what I need to do. And then when he realized it wasn't going to work then either, he ran. So he literally leaves her there. And she sort of puts her clothes back on, gets herself straight. She goes back to the castle, and her her bodyguard, Sir Kristen Cole, is then, for want of a better word, seduced. used and abused. Yeah. He is used. Now, uh, for she, me, this is. Can this, I can I can oh, I read you my bullet point because I think you'll find it funny. Rhaenyra, horny from all the incest foreplay, seduces her guard. Yep. <laughs> Yep, can't argue with that. I mean, for me, the bit that made me almost chuckle... Yeah. ...is the fact that this is Game of Thrones. Yeah. We've just had that scene in the brothel with sex everywhere. Yeah. This was probably the most PG sex scene... Ever in Game of Thrones, yeah. Ever in Game of Thrones. Yeah. And I was like, you didn't even see a nipple. And I'm like, I'm impressed. And at the same time, slightly amused at the fact we've just had a scene in a brothel. Yeah, well, it's it's kind of again. I think it's perhaps protecting the actress a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm like you. It was kind of like, uh, uh, and the I think I tell you what, the thing that made me laugh in amongst that is there was more time undressing him from his armor than actually going at it. Which again, quickies in those days must have been a nightmare. God, yeah, he's like, like take impossible. Off the, arm, yeah. the other arm, then the shoulder, the other yeah, shoulder, just... the shins. The boots, the yeah, thighs, take the chest bit off, and yeah. now I'm wearing clothes. Yeah, I feel oh, for him. For I, I, feel, yeah, I, I feel for him. Um, now this happens, and uh, Damon he explains why it took so little time to actually do the deed. He's taken all that time. Yeah, time undressed. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be done in. I'd be ready for you know glass of milk and sleep. Nap time. Yeah, exactly. Wake me up when you're ready, love. Um, or wake me up when you're done. <laughs> but anyway, um, so. That this is what has happened. So Damon was seducing her and did very much have her motor running, but we know can't perform. So ran and got drunk. However, he was seen with her doing some naughty stuff by one of Lord High Tower's little spies. Yeah. High Tower is then in that interesting position. He doesn't like Damon. We've seen that. He wants that wedge between them, and this is kind of the ultimate. Because of course his daughter is now queen, and his grand his grandchild is, in essence, next in line if Rhaenyra is removed. Yeah. So he has the opportunity in his mind to make that happen. So he goes to the king. Now, what Slimy makes me little bastard? He is. But what makes me laugh about this is, on paper, he's like, "This is perfect." Yep. 
the brother I don't like is going to be maybe killed for this. This has got to be a beheading. The, surely, the daughter, yeah. yeah, the daughter that is in the way of my grandson becoming king is surely going to get disinherited. And and if nothing else, you know, she he can never be married off now. Exactly. She's been yeah. Dirty, yeah. So, yeah. She's oh. been solid. This this yeah. is amazing. This is the result. And then he walks into the room. And he has that realisation of, holy shit, I'm about to tell my king that his daughter's being fucked by his brother. And it just, because I'm watching it and I'm laughing. Most awkward conversation ever. And I'm just laughing to myself because I'm thinking it's like, on paper, this is the dream scenario for me. But then he walks in and it's almost like it hits him. Um, my lord, I have some uncomfortable news. Well, spit it out, man. Um... On second thoughts, I'm really reconsidering, like, well, tell me. And you could see him, like, um, how do I say this? Uh, inappropriate behaviour? Um, the thing is, of course, the Targaryens, they marry their family and stuff. So Yeah, so the king's probably listening to this guy. Yeah. Oh, for fuck. Oh, that was disappointing. I but, mean, you know, it could have yeah, been worse. Exactly, could have been a stranger. Yeah. <laughs> As it is, the king does lose his shit and he goes at Hightower and he's angry about it. I mean, it's one of those shoot the messenger kind of things though, and it? You know, if someone comes to me and gives me news like that, they're going to get clocked. Even if I understand that it was difficult for them, I don't want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, you know, think about how Damon beat that messenger. The fact that I felt the king would have bitch slapped this guy severely. Oh, um, God, yeah. But a, a little side note, something I've not talked about, but I think it is worth mentioning. The king is very sickly. Yeah, he's, he's got, ill. Leeches he has got, all sorts. He's yeah. having leeches on a regular basis. Sitting on the throne with the swords, he is literally cutting himself. His back, his hands, and the, it keeps bleeding, and he's scarred, and he has, you know, he has to have this pus removed and stuff. He is sickly. There is something wrong. There's also a proverb, which I remember from Game of Thrones, where someone said, anyone who sits on the Iron Throne and is cut by it is not worthy of the, or not worthy of the seat. Mm-hmm. So I did, I did think of that when I was in there. Um, the king obviously then has to have probably one of the most awkward conversations a father can ever have with a daughter. Yeah. Um, not only has he got to discuss her potential sex life, he has to discuss her potential sex life with his brother, her uncle. Yeah. Uh, good job, everybody. Well done. Really lovely scene. A uh, warm family moment. Um, but what is interesting to me is he, when he speaks to Damon, Damon doesn't deny it. Damon even kind of insinuates that he did have sex with her. Yeah. And the king's rage is like, right, you are now gone. You go back to your wife. You get the hell out of here. And it is basically like, if you stay here, you're dead. And then um, his, his reply is, well, it's fine. Just marry her to me instead then. And I'm like, yeah, you no, are not no. reading the room very well. You are not like, reading the room, dude. You are not getting yeah. this. No, I will and... kill you for touching my daughter. Ah, save the time. Just marry her to me. Yeah, so, so, that's, <laughs> so that's kind of, that's there. That's the subplot there. But when he, when he, because Damon, so this is the thing that I find interesting. Damon says he did it. When he speaks to Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra's like, no, I did not have sex with Damon. Now, she goes as far when she's talking to her old friend, now the queen, though, is swear on her mother's life. Yep. She did not have sex with him. Now, she didn't, but she was there with him. She was definitely getting ready with him. And she, she would have done if she could. Yo, know, if, if he was able, she would have done. But, so she isn't in essence lying about that but of course she does go back to her room and nail her guard and so what is interesting to me is of course the king's like you're telling me you didn't do it she's like no but when she goes back to her room the king sends the maester with a special tea which is basically a liquid version of the morning after pill i'm guessing it's exactly what it is and then i'm like so he didn't believe her so now she's got a really fun predicament of yeah. she drinks it knowing yeah. that she did do the deed but with yeah. someone else yeah. drinks it to make sure she's safe. However, but then according her father, to her dad, yeah. she thinks she slept with her uncle. Yep. Or she doesn't drink it yep. and crosses everything. Yeah, and crosses so then everything. then it's up to three weeks. You know. Yeah, crosses everything that is, you know, pull out game was strong. Yeah. So, yeah, I am... Um... I'm kind of uh, yeah. I'm of the opinion that she drinks. She's drunk it. Uh, I'm of the opinion she did drink it. Um, but it's the fact that the king didn't believe her is what I found interesting in that yeah. because he had his daughter saying one thing and his brother saying something else. He believed his brother. 
Now, yeah. does that circle back to the male thing? Male versus female. Yeah. yeah. Do you, you see what I mean with that? It kind of felt like, wait a minute, this is actually really out of line because Damon is lying in that moment. I know what he was doing and he was going to, but he can't and he isn't ever going to admit he can't and that's why I think he said he did it. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to admit, no, actually, brother, I can't because I can't, can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to, um, but I can't. Yeah, so I don't suppose there's a T for that, is there? There probably is. <laughs> yeah. He just hasn't gone to a maester to find out. <laughs> um, that is obviously the key crux of episode four. Um, what we do find as well, which I find really interesting, is Rhaenyra kind of manipulates the situation to get rid of Hightower as the hand. And she agrees to marry someone politically to help the, the realm. Um, so she agrees to marry the child of the Sand Snake to repair that relationship, the boy, um, and enable her, who is basically her cousin, I think, is the way it basically, works. Basically, yeah, it's his sister, her dad's sister's child, so yeah, cousin. Yeah, cousin or second cousin, I'm not quite, it's definitely a relation anyway, but, you know, there we go. And And someone says, I think, they grew up together. So they know each other really well. Yeah. So it's kind of like, okay, we've established that. We know that that's what she's going to do. But it's the way she's gone from, I'm never doing that. That's awful to actually, no, I think this is the right thing to do. And it's like, she's realized after, you know, she's got this younger brother now. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, if I'm, if I'm going to be queen and rule the seven kingdoms, okay, I need a, I need a lot of support. Yeah. Um. And the sea snake, his army, his house with me. That's that's me cemented. That's me, you know, doing the right thing. And yeah. it also fixes the issue where my dad rejected a twelve-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love, love that. Uh. So we're gonna waltz now into episode five. The title of the episode was "We Light the Way." Um. Damon is sent back to his castle and to his wife. We meet her out riding and hunting, and Damon comes across her, and he kills her. Yeah. What? After she lied, a great lie. <laughs> yes. Left there with, I'm guessing what happened was as she fell off the horse and it landed on her, she, yeah. it broke her back or her neck. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think it broke her back, yeah. Yeah. So she's led there basically going to die, but slowly and painfully. He's actually quite happy to walk off and let her die slowly and painfully. However, she then makes the comment of, just like you, unable to finish. Yeah, I knew you wouldn't be able to finish. It was like, and I was Whoa. like, oh, you're dying. That has got to be the most boss final words ever. <laughs> yeah, he then picks up the stone and yeah. walks back towards her and luckily it cuts out, but we find yeah. out that he crushed her skull yeah. and yeah. spine. Yeah. He's like, yeah. oh, nice guy. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so me and you have discussed his character to this point. We've been kind of like, okay, uh, not a bad guy, you know, what is he, what is he? That was messed up. Yeah. Like, like Game of Thrones, you very rarely have what you'd call a lawful good character. Probably Eddard Stark is it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Every, everyone else, there are shades to them. Shades of grey. And it's like, oh, you did that. But then you did that. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, everyone. Um, That was like a cough slash sneeze. <laughs> yeah, it went really badly wrong. Um, So, he does kill her. And in that moment, I'm like, that is so messed up. Like, that was so bad. But yeah. he does it to free himself of his marriage which he doesn't want to be in and clearly she was aware clearly they tried to consummate that marriage and he wasn't able and then he ran off and that made her angry yeah <laughs> so and it seems like there's a reason he wants to get rid of that wedding and it does seem that like he is genuinely after he is yes yeah. he is yeah. he is absolutely after her um lord hightower leaves king's landing Yep. But not before telling his daughter that her children will be killed as soon as Rhaenyra is crowned. Yeah, he says the king it, the king is unwell, and your friend to cement her throne to make sure she is undisputed will kill you and your children. So you need to be ready. You need to get them strong. You need to get them, you know, ready to fight. Yeah. 
We then see a really slimy little git of a character who's got a bit of a limp called Larry Strong uh, from the House Strong who have taken over as the Hand of the King, um, yeah. Lord Strong. And he is a shitster and little bugger because he goes to the king, to the queen, and talks about the tea that Reniera had. I mean, she's sick, is she? She had this special yeah. tea made just for it her. It was, yeah, very. Oh, yeah. And of course, yeah. she is. She is straight on that. She clearly knows what that tea is, by the way. Yeah. There, there was, there was no kind of like, oh, I wonder what that tea could have been. It was like, I know what that was. Yep. I know exactly what that was. So she calls Sir Kristen in for a chat. Thinking oh, to herself, mate, well, this, he, yeah, yeah, this scene, uh, because she calls him in on the basis of he's the guard. Maybe I can just get from him to find out if Damon's been going in and out. Yeah, has Damon been, been in her out. room? Has she yeah. been out of her room? And he's just so, sat there going, "Yep, I did it. It was me. Yeah, Hands and up. that my bad. Please just idiot. kill me quickly. Don't talk yeah. to me. It was me." That absolute Dude. prat. <laughs> I, I'm like, mate, what have you done? And the best thing for me, this actress nailed this scene. Like yeah. she is like looking away, and you see shock as he's saying it turns to opportunity. Then it just it, it turns to right. Okay, no problem. Go back to your post, and you could see him like what in her brain. She's like, I now have that. Yeah. That is an ace up my sleeve, and he knows that if I tell anyone, he's dead. Yeah. So he now belongs to me. Yeah. And I think he realizes that after she lets him go. Like I've just admitted this. She's let me go. I'm now with this sword over my head. Like I, I was thinking I've admitted this. Now I'm dead. I, I go in peace to meet my lord. Man, I think no. I'd rather. I think I would have rather the death sentence than yeah. the. No, no, go along. Thank you very yeah. much for your honesty. Oh crap. Well, I, I think that's what leads him to snap. So, what we see in a separate scene is Kristen goes with Rhaenyra to meet with the sea snake with the king. They arrange the marriage and negotiation and it's done and it's sealed. Rhaenyra then, when she meets up with the guy she's going to marry, what is really interesting is she says, I know I'm not your taste. And yeah. I'm like, ooh, wait a minute. Is this like Renly? Is this like, the you know, when we first saw in uh, Game of Thrones, Renly was gay but um, what's her name? Marjorie was going to marry him. Like that's fine. I know you're. I know you're nailing my brother. I know it's your my brother you love. Yeah. You all you have to do is you know give me a baby. Um. So if my brother needs to come in to get you going, so you can do that, that's fine. And I always remember watching that, thinking, "Wow, she is next level." Yeah. She is. I'm going to be queen. Don't care about what you know. I'll I'll have a guy if I want one, and you have your guy. No worries at all. And Rhaenyra was like, "Yeah." This is perfect. I get to carry on with my guard. Yeah, you get to carry I, on with your fella. No yeah, worries. And, and no one will ever be the wiser. So it seems like, well, this deal is going to work out great. You know, they're, they're all kind of like, oh, how are they getting on? Oh, they've known each other all their lives. They'll be fine. And it's like, yeah, they have. And because of that, I think this is why she was okay to do it. This is why because she went she to her Because she had known him all his yeah. life. She knew what he she was. She knew. Yeah. She knew he was gay. So she knew she was going to be in charge of this relationship. Now, we see this guy that he's clearly in love with one of his guards as well, which is kind of funny, kind of interesting, one of the people with him. Yeah. And when they when they come to King's Landing for kind of like the wedding feasting and then the wedding, we have this big banquet. There's several things that happen in this big banquet, um, but we're just going to finish the Kristen part first. This guy who is dating the future king is a moron. Yeah. Because he works out, he thinks it's going to be Kristen who's, you know, the queen's bit on the side. Yep. And rather than just keeping that information or telling his other half, oh, I think I know who it is, he decides he's going to go and play politics and get in his face like, I know it's you. And, you know, I've made it clear that I know it's you. And, you know, me and you will have to kind of keep their secrets, etc. Now, we know that Kristen's kind of on the edge. He's admitted to the Queen what he did, expecting to be executed, and has been just told to go back to his job. Yep. So he's probably very what the hell about that. We also know, earlier in the episode, on the boat, he tells Rhaenyra, run away with me. Yeah, just, we'll let's just away. go. We'll fall in love, it's fine. 
And she's like, nah, you're good. You're good for humping, and that's what I'd like. I'd still like you three or four times a day, maybe after breakfast a couple of times on Sunday. But no, mate, I'm going to be queen. (laughs) What are you talking about? Um, So he's heartbroken. He is realised that he's been, he's just a sex toy, basically. And then he has that with the queen where he thinks, I'm going to go and admit this and be killed. No, I'm now put back to work. And then this guy gets in his face and he snaps. He literally beats this guy to death with his bare hands, crushing his skull. Um, it It is brutal. It is a brutal, brutal scene. Yep. And the guy's dead. Kristen then goes off by himself and the guy's been beaten to death. Now, that is one of the big things. Now, that happens just as the king spots Damon dancing with his daughter, Rhaenyra. Yeah. And again, speaking in Valerian, she basically says, I'm not married yet. If you want me, take me. Cut through the king's garden, take me with you. Take me to Dragonstone. Make me your wife, which is like, oh, yeah. he's your uncle. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, again. It's quite interesting, of course, because Daenerys was uh john's auntie yeah and john nailed her yeah yeah so you know <clears throat> it's a targaryen thing isn't it just in his defense at that point he didn't know and when he did find out he wouldn't touch her which which i remember danny being like oh come on it's still good and he's like nope <laughs> i'm targaryen it's fine no yeah, no no yeah. no, no. No, 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 it's fine. I might be a Targaryen, but I've been raised in the North. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> go away. I'd rather go put it in another wildling. What? Nothing. Um. So, Rhaenyra basically says that to him, and so I'm for the first time, I'm like, oh, this is mutual. I know she got really into that moment, but this is actually mutual. This is, she actually would like him, I think. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of a oh wow moment. Then that massive fight breaks out, and we see um, we see him go off, Kristen, and he's going to kill himself. He's gone to the weirwood tree, uh, weirwood tree, sorry, and he's going to kill himself. But the queen stops him. So again, I think this is going to be no, no. You work for me now. You're her guard, but you work for me. That's that's what I think is going to happen there. I also think the Queen might start, you know, having a bit of Kristen to herself as well. Just my my humble opinion. She okay. knows where the tea's at. Well, yeah. Uh, I just think that she's... Now, the reason why I think she's going that way is because I think her father got in her head. I think the events of the way Rainier is behaving makes her think, actually, I can't trust my friend. She swore on her mother's life she never did anything. Now, she swore on her mother's life she never nailed her uncle. But, which is true, yeah. Which is true, but we're kind of like, from her point of view, she's like, I can't trust her. My father's just said the minute she assumes the throne and the king is dying, everyone can see that. Yeah. I'm going to get killed, and so are my kids. And it's interesting is she arrives to the banquet dressed in green, and she arrives late to make an entrance. And he says, you know, the flame, the torch goes yeah. green at yeah. war or something. Yeah. yeah. So basically, she's walked in there declaring war yeah she's gone in there to make it about her she is now standing on her own and i think it's her uncle in the middle yeah um it was it was good it was clever i liked it it's uh the shy timid little girl who married the king has grown up um it was yeah it was interesting but um mate i mean those are my notes that we've kind of waltzed through I've got no doubt there are bits that we've kind of skipped over a little bit lightly. Apologies, but, you know, we're trying to make this bite size. So, you know, it's not a five hour podcast. <laughs> um, are there any other bits from the first five episodes you think, ah, you've missed this. We really should mention. Not that I can think of, buddy. Hero. Um, so that is it. That was our show. That This is part A. So this is House of the Dragon part A. Now, we are going to do a part B. So the next five episodes, there's going to be a time jump, apparently of 10 years. Yes. So it's going to be quite interesting. Now, we are going to be on that. Now, is the king still going to be around in 10 years? Because basically, at the end of this episode, he collapses at the wedding. Uh, so we don't know. But is we are going to talk about... So when the series ends, we are going to do episodes 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 all together as a part B for season 1. 
And like we said, probably in the new year when when season two launches, we'll go back to doing one per episode. Yeah. But this is what it is for this year, and with the time jump, it's just worked perfectly. <laughs> uh, but mate, that's it. That is the show. Um, massive thank you to everybody who sent in messages. By the way, we've had a lot of messages. People saying, "Are you going to cover this?" We loved your Game of Thrones podcast. So thank you so much. Um, thank you for your patience. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's kind of like a summary of, of the five episodes. Uh, we will be back in about five weeks' time when we're going to sum up the final five episodes and then the series as a whole and then look ahead to season two. But until then, everybody, well, you all take care. That's a wrap. Thank you for listening to the Stuff and Things podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. You can find us on Facebook or online. Simply search The Stuff and Things Podcast to join in our conversation every week.